In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. I know a lot of our people are still staying at home for caution, which is always a very good thing. Uh, you don't have to register anymore. Just come uh, and uh, come and be with you if you feel comfortable. Again, we have our tape mass um, uh, this evening for those who are watching it from home. So uh, many blessings um, we ask for in this mass. The blessing of openness, the blessing of um, that we can keep trusting for God's grace and also for the gift of openness to God's forgiveness. So we just ask God to help us with his gift of forgiveness at this time. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the dark darkness of error but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen <clears throat> reading from the book of wisdom. God did not make death, and he does not delight in the death of the living. For he created all things so that they might exist. The generative forces of the world are wholesome 
and there is no destructive poison in them. And the dominion of Hades is not on earth. For righteousness is immortal. For God created man for incorruption and made him in the image of his own eternity. But through the devil's envy, death entered the world. And those who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, 
The one who had much did not have too much. And the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side, a great crowd, crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse, and had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing that what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Jesus allowed no one to follow him. When they came into the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make such a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And when they laughed at him, Jesus put them all outside. He took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about, for she was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them not that no one should know about this, and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel reading today, we hear of two miracles Jesus performed. And if you meditate on them, hopefully you will find a synopsis of our faith. In the first miracle, Jesus raises the daughter of the synagogue leader back to life. 
And in the second miracle, Jesus heals the long-suffering woman. I would like to start with a woman who had suffered from the bleeding disorder for many years. She had spent all her money on doctors and medical procedures, and none of them which healed her. The doctors ended up making her condition worse, and her illness made her unclean, which means she couldn't worship at the temple with the other woman. She had to stay away. One day, she was desperate and felt lost and abandoned and beyond all help. And then one day she heard about a man called Jesus, and it was rumored that he could perform miracles. That is what she desperately needed. And hoping against hope that rumors were true, she planned to try one last time. And she was afraid to approach Jesus directly because she had been already tried everything and she had nothing more to offer him. Another disappointment would have been the last straw. Her plan was to secretly touch his garment and hope for the best. If her plan failed, she could sneak away and live the rest of her life in misery without embarrassing Jesus or herself. But as it turned out, she touched the hem of Jesus' garment and in that instant everything changed. Jesus immediately knew what she had done. He could have left it alone and went on his way as if nothing happened. But instead, he turned around and he called her out, knowing full well she would be embarrassed, scared and trembling. Jesus called her not to admonish her, but to dispel the embarrassment, the fear and the trembling she was feeling at that moment. Jesus called her because he wanted her, he wanted more from her in order to give her more. He wanted to meet her. He wanted her to trust him and to know him. Only in this way could he become her shepherd and truly take care of her needs. He said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. So this woman would never fear Jesus again, and he would forever remain in her heart. This clandestine encounter in the dark has now become a life-giving healing in the light. Sometimes it can be the same with us. We have problems and we try everything, but we fail. It seems that everything is against us. As a last resort, we pray and we cry out for help. We may ask others to pray for us, but help in most cases appears to come slowly. This is our greatest fear, being ignored by God, being rejected. Why is that? Is our faith weak? Maybe deep down we feel Jesus won't heal us. Maybe we feel unworthy or we think we are asking too much or too little. This woman did have faith, faith enough to try once more, even though she thought she, it was a long shot. The doctors had failed her and the world had failed her. This was a last ditch effort to find a cure she so desperately needed. But her courage and her desire saved her that day because Jesus was looking for that lost sheep and he found her. Brothers and sisters, the lesson to be learned is this. We should never be afraid to bring our sufferings to Jesus. If you ask for help, you must approach him head on. Look him directly in the eyes and ask him. The scriptures tell us that all prayers are answered. Maybe not as we not in the way we would like, but we must trust that his answer is the best one for our circumstances in life. If you approach Jesus from a place of hiding, not willing to be seen, it's like the lost sheep sneaking back into the sheep pen for some food and then sneaking out again, only to remain lost. We have to believe that if the woman had approached Jesus and looked him in the eyes, he would have gladly healed her. Jesus would never reject a wounded person who approaches him and asks for mercy, even if that person was the worst of sinners. Approaching Jesus with an attitude of humility and submission is the first step to healing 
and eternal life. God is generous to all his children and he brings life-giving rain to both the good and the bad alike. In the first miracle, Jesus raises the daughter of the synagogue leader back to life. And we know from the book of Genesis that God created us in his own image, intending us to live and not to die. Death was introduced into the world by the devil because of his envy and because of sin, we will ultimately all die. In the Gospel reading, Matthew shows that Jesus has the power to forgive sin, and because of that he has the power to defeat death. That's why he was able to raise the young girl to life after she died of a terminal illness. By healing the bleeding widow, Jesus shows he has the power to heal corruption which is brought about by sin. So in summary of today's three readings, we can learn that God loves the world so much that he sent Jesus to us that by reject, uh, to show us that by rejecting sin and believing and trusting in him, we will be born again into eternity of happiness where there is no more sickness and no more death. God bless you all. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, in a seat at the right hand God, Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring to God on this 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time our prayers from ourselves, from our families, and from our community. For the church, embraced by Jesus' unconditional love and acceptance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public authorities, bound to protect and meet the needs of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families and for our community, reaching out to others, we also think of our, all our graduates at this time. May God bless them and their families. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children who die residential schools, far from their homes and families, they may rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering in any way, the sick and those who care for them, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died marked with the sign of faith, our deceased loved ones, for Colleen Weber, and for our Mass intentions this weekend, for Agnes Utsi and Juliette LeClaire. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the needs that we carry in the quiet of our hearts this day, we pause. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful and loving God, we thank you for hearing these special prayers. Help us to bring our prayers to you and concerns to Jesus, our brother, for he lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. Now so with the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the for the gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and at the willing end of his own passion, Jesus took bread. In giving thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was done, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Thelgus, our bishop of the clergy, and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and Saints, Saint Teresa, who pleased you throughout the ages, may be married to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through and with them and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, in form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And in grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other now, sign of Christ, peace. Peace be with you, Father. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice be of offered and received. Fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a, a few announcements this weekend, not too many. I apologize for the, the mistake, there were three mistakes in the bulletin for the Mass times this past week. Um, so we apologize for that. Now this coming week we will have Mass on Canada Day at 12.05. Mass Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then next weekend as usual. Um, I think we're going to give Jeff a break next weekend and give him a week's holiday for good goodness. And um, so we're going to give him a break for that. So we thank Jeff always for um, doing a good job and uh, also music as always. We thank them as well. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, again, there's not too much different. Again, uh, if you want to register, you can, but also other people can come and also not register because um, we're only getting what 8% of our 15%. So again, it's up to you, anyone to come or not to come, but again, that's not totally up to you with again the pandemic. So um, the bulletin will be up. Um, we have a two week bulletin actually, um, uh, but I'll talk about that next weekend. And yeah, so a regular bulletin, not too many things in there. Um, uh, so we won't be taping next weekend. So for the um, praying at mass, um, uh, uh, this weekend we will have a uh, I'll be giving it on Salt and Light or um, another channel on Vision um, also they have it on um, Yes TV so um, and then we'll have a reflection for this coming week and then I think we'll take a break again as well too um, for a week or two on the reflections but any of your suggestions, ideas uh, anything we can do over the summer um, please um, get a hold of us and we'll try to do the best we can Again, the food trucks, I haven't been praying hard enough for good weather on Friday, so sorry about that. But I don't have that much pull. Uh, maybe Deacon Basil does, but um, maybe um, maybe the choir has to pray for sunshine on Friday. So I can't do what I can do, but uh, the food trucks we have on Friday night. So again, thank you all for your dedication, for your prayer, and for your goodness. Thank you all so very, very much. And again, I remember, Jeff, I remember forgetting anything, Jeff? I always forget something, don't I? Oh, and we thank people that were asked to give wedding pictures. Um, we thank them as well, too. They, they, they looked so young then, and they look so young now. So thank you for that. So that's it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.